Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I went ahead and I wanted to make this video. I'll go ahead and get it made for this week's shop talk uh, for machining content. Uh, there's a lot been going on in my life. Again, if you follow me on Facebook and hear my pages or hear me talk about a lot of times, uh, my day job has worked a tremendous amount of overtime. And this particular week, I worked five days, 12 hour shifts which meant I went in in the morning somewhere about 3 a.m. means getting up about 2 a.m. And um, also, that also means that I got work eight hours a day and we'll have to work Sundays, eight hours tomorrow. And I will probably work 3 to 11 or 3 to 11, 20 tomorrow too. So uh, this is this week's shop talk, uh, machining content. I'm going to put some other stuff in it. Uh, I'm going to make a separate video I'm working on, and uh, I'm going to be on vacation next week, so I probably won't have any machining content. I'm going to Myrtle Beach, which is about a five-hour drive from here, four and a half or so, for a few days towards the end of the week. And um, taking a friend, this, she's going with me. So uh, we're going to take a friend, and we're going down to Myrtle Beach and have it take a few days and enjoy ourselves and see what we can get into. But, um, I'm just uh, again uh, there's some other things that I'm looking at and where to work on so we will talk about them in a later day. Alright ladies and gentlemen we're going to start today on the, on the other part of this project uh, that I was working on a little bit and that is That is facing this. Uh, we're going to make another one of these, and this is to put a cutoff wheel on the angle grinder. So, do is basically we're going to face this off and then we'll you know what we might as well when we got this end up let's go ahead and drill it and and drill it and get it ready might as well go ahead and drill it and get it ready to tap and remember the other day we done these we had a lot of fun tapping these monstrosities up get the boring bar back out we had to bore the we actually had to bore this to get it to the right size for the tap we wanted to use so I don't have a big enough drill all Okay.
three quarter, maybe even a half. I mean, already a half. I don't know what I'm going to go three quarters. This adjustment nut's tight so it won't lose center again. We turn it around to the other side. by 11 needs to be drilled it needs to be uh, 531 thousandths a little bit more it says 531 it's a little bit more a little bit big it's not going to hurt nothing I'm going through about 540. I want a little bit easier tap than 531. Uh, it's still about 80%. So if we go 546 at 66, that should be plenty. So yeah, we're we're a little bit between about five. That's why I was going a little bit bigger. So we can tap this thing without a lot of trouble. Because again, I don't have a big a big tap wrench. I have to use an adjustable to do the tapping. So If you remember the last time we was doing the, the other adapter, it was having loads of fun. So. Quite big, that's a little bit too big. Not big enough. Okay. There we go. We got a 
camper. Let's get us a tap starter. We're gonna, like I say, we're going to do this here, the the Cosset methodology here, because I'm like, uh, I definitely don't have a big A-bomb size tap wrench, folks. So we got to do things with what you got sometimes. And we don't have A-bomb size tap wrenches. Still working on my anchor loop sample too. Oh, let's see if I can start this with a little adjustable. What's going on here? Well, it might help to tighten it up, wouldn't it? Help. A lot of things would help. And then dropping the tap don't help none either. Well, we've proceeded to stick the spring loaded in there too, didn't we? There. Now, let's see if we can start this booger. The other day we done this, we had a lot of fun. So, let's see if we have just as much now. That's one of the reasons that I chose to tap it. Just a bit big. So that I would drill it up for it just a hair bit bigger. So it would tap a little better. This is uh, one of them spiral flute taps. It's an interstate from Enco. I mean, it's not uh, the greatest in the, I mean, you know, it's in the, the world. And my little lathe, that's another subject altogether, is my little lathe. Turn on my AIR here. Hot. This one will go in. Whoa, I want to unchuck it. I'm trying to get enough. I'm using the tap handle as a holder to hold the part. Probably what I'm more need to do here is keep the little screw in it is take it to the adjustable and hold one with each. And then with a little more leverage. This is a pretty big tap so you're not going to break it. I don't use many large taps, so therefore I don't have a large tap wrench. You know, that adds uh, have to improvise sometimes and that's what we're doing today is improvising. We just like I say these little lays mine's small lay. I'm actually wanting a larger one and I'm in the market so I'm looking for a different lay. I've kind of narrowed it down to a couple of choices. I'm actually bidding on one on eBay. So Anyway, I think we got this under control now. One of the things that you want to do is you got always going to have some run out. I don't care what you work with, how much, and what we're going to do here. 
is that I'm going to make a mark. What that mark is, it's basically number one chuck job. I learned this trick <laughs> when I still had hair. So let's turn it around, orient it, because we're going to turn the end of this down too, by the way. So where it's that long, don't matter if as long as you get them in the same chuck jaw, that's going to make sure that's going to make the part run a lot sure. And now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to apply, like I said, I'm playing a trigon today. Well, I'm playing two or three different trigons. Huh? Well, same one I have. That's that other one I cut down. Let's see, hopefully, it's going to be a little better. I'll just grab the different one. I got two of them almost alike. This is a little more bigger tool, so we're going to... This is making that edge on the center. This is may not be on the center, so... Actually, this is more on the center than the other. Like I said, I, I could basically cut it off, and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to face this off just to show it up. All I'm doing. And okay. There we go. That looks pretty good. Alright, folks. Let me cut you off. You can drop that in this stuff. Okay, now we're going to start turning this down. Basically, what we're going to do is turn it down to 3 eighths of an inch on this end. Now you're going to hear a little noise, that's because this is a hex bar, by the way, so you're going to hear a little bit of hex noise. I've already set my stop. And this lathe, you only get about 30 thousandths of pop. Thirty or forty. I'm using another trigon, by the way. So you can't take much. Slay's just not that rigid, and that's one of the problems. The other thing is. It's harder to control the feed rate. And if you can control the feed rates, you see you notice by doing the hand like that. You know. Okay, you know. Time you take a deep cut, it just locks the shape. Take light touch, what you got it in. It's not totally you can use the eye. I cut the other one down that um, you see me make. I cut a lot of it off camera because my camera died. And um, basically, I went ahead and put the small tool in as a positive. This, you know, this is a negative rate tool. See, when you're hitting that top, that's what you're looking for. Starts to make a record. Right, let me get that set so it won't be hitting it again, making more rack. Still ain't up on it. back. I'm going to go back and trim this anyway. Actually, i got another plan here, so there we go. Excuse the noise. 
point a lot of times on the forums when we talked about these negative rate tools. I know if you some of the people who view my channel watch Greg Halligan's channel when we had an older South Bend and he can really I sent him one of my CNMG tools. He can really take it I'm going, I'm looking, I'm bidding on a lathe on eBay, but I'll probably get sniped because I don't want to put a lot in the sight unseen. I'm pretty decided that I'm going to go ahead and go with it. larger lathe. A different one. Steel's about all I'm able to cut. It'll take a while to get down to size. I'll probably bring you back. similar wheel we're going to use so make sure it, the radius is going to cut the wheels will take the radius and that way you'll know that will work okay so now all we're going to have to do is we're going to we just got the, the, the threads on it again you know I'm not going to see Basically, I have a set of Craftsman dies that I've had for years, and I've probably mentioned it several times that over the period of these videos. And uh, so, basically, what I do is I use a Coat it with a cutting oil, and uh, you'll notice this, that basically what this die holder is nothing no more than a socket. Just to loosen this up a little bit where this floats. And basically that's all it is. It's just a deep well socket. 
that's basically slightly modified to use the dial and works really well these dies and like I said sometimes the most best solutions are the easiest well I know had the hex dies so like I said the standard dies I've had I've had them for years literally years and I'm gonna go ahead and check that for us I'm gonna go a little further because obviously you, you don't thread right up to it but we're just now I'm gonna do some more to this it's just not gonna be complete at this stage obviously I'm going to go ahead and get it up there close enough to where the... Alright. And... To where when you tighten the nut up to allow for the chamfer the thread, basically and all that good stuff, you're going to have a little bit of room. And again, I'm just using, instead of... See, that's just no trouble at all. I'm going to actually go a hair a bit further just because I want to make sure that, it, that the nut, okay, let's back the tailstock off, get a hold to this and hit the reverse, and whoa, well, it just didn't come off, did it? I thought it would just back off right easy, but it just didn't want to thread off easy. I felt that, I stopped. Well, I've been the smartest thing I've done today, is it? See, that way if I got to go back and thread a little further, which looks like I'm going to have to, probably put the die in backwards. See, this is the other reason that I wanted. Yeah, it's got to go a little more. I'm going to just put the die in backwards. And where it started, we'll run it up in there. Start to die in there backwards, and, and you know way you can. It lined all back up here. So, so Chuck jaw, real Chuck. Just enough to hold it. Adjustable wrench here. Turn it on up there and we'll give it a little more thread. Give it just that way we'll we'll get enough on it that we know that we got plenty of thread to cover the wheel. What you do is once you tighten the nut and the washer, a washer actually going to be put on the outside of it, but you still want to make sure that we got enough space there to do it. Okay, now that's just not going, so we go about two or three more around. We'll definitely have enough up in there for that to ride on. There we go. That should be plenty of thread for that to ride on. Let's back it off the hold by hand because it didn't when I fired, fired the machine up a minute ago you noticed that this didn't work like I thought. So we'll go. Alright, let's just hold this here wheel up there, make sure that's going to be what we want. Probably much so. It's going to be a little bit about, we're going to have to go in there and do a, it's like it's a, it's like it's raised a little burr up right there in the end. Get that one filed just a bit. We'll try that. We may have to go in there. 
may have to take a um, cut off tool or something. Go in there and try to cut, get that corner just a little bit. Take some of that corner out. Nope, that's what it was. It just had a little bit of a raised up burr right there from, from the die. Okay. Now, I'm going to do something else, and obviously you don't use as much of these wheels as you can, so what we do with the deburr machine, what we call deburr machines at work, we just take an SAE washer and kind of put on in the front. So what I'm going to do is measure this. I'm going to cut up, what I'm going to do is cut the diameter back about a quarter of an inch down to this washer. And what that's going to let us have is it's loosened up a little bit and then we're going to make a flat then we're going to come in here we'll set the compound at an angle and we'll do the same thing we're just going to turn a small piece there we go This is just to give us a reference, so to speak. close but That's about 30,000. That'll do it right there, right close enough. That's just about close to that washer diameter there. Yeah, a little bit smaller, about 10,000. That's not a hard thing. Now we're going to go in here and I'm going to pull it out a little bit. And we're going to cut, uh, we're going to do like we did the other one. We're going to cut a little paper on it just for looks and put about a, some kind of a separate paper on it. Oh, just throw it anchor the ball over, throw it back here. Now the camera. So, eight degrees that looks good we don't this is not exact I don't have a print I'm just making this to eye hort look kind of eyeball look this and it's not gonna be no the only size I'm gonna do here is just 
work it down to the finished size that I've got on the OD and I may trim a hair bit off of it to blend it or may not, it depends on how it works out. But the idea is that we're going to, you know, not just have a step in it, make it look a little bit more like somebody knows what they was doing, I guess, is a good way of putting it. same trigon that I put in the machine that we've been playing with all day, so.
Step right there, we'll file that off. That'll work. We'll move the chuck out and we'll give it a little bit of, we'll take the sander and take the belt sander and get that on there a little bit. They'll be real good to go. There you go. So there it is. That is my other adapter right there. And I'm going to go over here and put it on the belt sander and we'll come back and take a, a, a close up of it. Alright, I'm going to get you in here close and let you look at it. Going handheld. Here. This is the adapter. You'll see it's a uh, made out of the same hex stock machine. It's got the taper and you see how the wheel fits right on. It's real simple. And you just put this right on your angle grinder and it'll give you a you know that'll, that'll give you the chance to use these small cutoff wheels if you need to. So that's the adapter we made this week and this is the one we made last week. Yeah, you've seen it. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm going to have to do another one of these domestic chores. It's called putting a button back on a pair of pants. So, we're in the process of managing that right now, too. So, something I hadn't really done very much of. Uh, hate to admit it but I can do it and as you obviously seeing I am but uh, normally I got a little lazy my mom bless her heart used to do all this for me and well mom's not here no more so and I was, like a, my work pants, you work rental uniforms, you know, obviously you, you uh, just fill out a request and they take care of it for you, but uh, the, you know, in personal clothes sometimes and the buttons is one of the things I'm not a real fan of. It's, is I like snaps because they usually don't give up and um, but we're going to get them in there the best way we can and yeah, that's enough of you seeing me so but I hope you enjoyed this week's shop talk uh, this is the video for this week uh, it's machining the other adapter for the uh, angle grinder, one little project I wanted to do. Another fairly simple project. Uh, I've um, got some other things in the works and you'll probably see another video. It may not be shop talk, something else that I'm working on. Have a great one.